President Buhari is warned against the National Water Resources Bill. And a faction emerges from the Nigerian Bar Association. This is Plus Politics, and I am Usaogi Ogbonwa. In what can be seen as a ripple effect on the withdrawal of the invitation of Governor Nasser El Rufai from the 2020 Conference of the Nigerian Bar Association, some lawyers of Northern Extraction have formed the new Nigeria Bar Association. The breakaway group, in a statement by two layers, uh, conveners, uh, Nuhu Ibrahim and Abdul Basit Suleiman, explained that the formation of the new NBA was aimed at protecting their interest. In response to this, the NBA president, in his inaugural speech, described the development as unfortunate and called for unity. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Mr. Raymond Kanebe and, uh, of course, Mr. Mohamed Abubakar. Thank you both for joining us on the program this evening. Yeah, good evening. All right, I'm going to kick off with um, Mr. Abubakar, Mohamed Abubakar. Um, we'll kick off with you. I, I want to know your thoughts um, from the statements from the new NBA, um, talking about how it, uh, I'm, let me quickly quote them. It says it exposed the inability of the NBA to manage and contain the heterogeneity of its members as well as their various interests. Um, do you agree with that statement? Sorry, I didn't get the statement. Sorry. The line is breaking. I didn't get the statement. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm quoting a statement from the new NBA saying that the um, issues in the NBA currently and, of course, uh, the drama that happened with regards to the governor of Kaduna State, um, it says it exposed the inability of the NBA to manage and contain the heterogeneity of its members as well as their various interests. Would you say you agree with that, with that point? Uh, yes, uh very much comfortable with the statement of the name Muhammad Al-Fakar Mandir, uh, one of the chair of uh, the NBA, the New Nigeria Association. In respect to the statement, as uh, you've uh, made reference to, yes, why we use the term exposed is to tell the public that uh, there are other things that are been happening within the NBA that uh, some of us uh, we are not uh, in tandem with, we are not in agreement with. And uh, with the current happening, we use uh, outrightly as if we washed our hands outside for the public to see. That is why we have to find that statement that way. Okay, not, not, not entirely clear, but I, I, want, I want you to go on and tell us better about um, uh, is there any, anything unlawful about setting up a new section of the NBA? You know, does the law permit that? Um, or have they in any way broken any parts of the law or the Constitution? Uh, yes, uh, to us, uh, we feel that uh, by virtue of uh, Section 20, uh, sorry, Section 40 of uh, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria, 1999, as amended, will be given the right to association. That is to say, we reserve the right to join or to form any association we so desire to follow. Therefore, in respect of that, we regard the NBA as an association. If that today some agreed member, which I'm a part of, I'm part of them, agree to opt out from the NBA and to form another association, which is the NBA. By law, there is nothing wrong with that. I don't say anything wrong with All that. Right. There is no law that uh, 
Okay, uh, hold on, hold on, please. Sir. We're gonna we're gonna move to uh, Raymond Kanebe. Hopefully, we can get better connection uh, from him. It seems we have uh, audio e connection problems with uh, Mr. Bubaka. Uh, Mr. Kanebe, if you can hear us clearly, I, I want to get your thoughts on um, the actions by the new NBA, um, as they are being called. Um, is there anything unlawful about the decision to form a new uh, um, NBA? And of course, I want you to relate this with the Legal Practitioners Act side by side with the Nigerian Constitution. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay, good evening very much, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Now, let's just get right into it. On the first question as to if there is anything unlawful by the act of setting up a new or a sister MBA, now the way to answer that is there is nothing unlawful to the extent that they want to set up an association to look after their own perhaps peculiar interests within the larger MBA. There is nothing unlawful to that extent. But to the extent that they want to operate side by side to the MBA as incorporated by the under the uh, under the companies and allied matters act it's it is offensive for the law of passing off because the impression is that in nigeria we have one nigeria bar association whilst we have other independent organs or bodies within the mba so it depends on how they want to operate if they want to operate as a disparate association of men of collective interest within the MBA, good and fine. We have semblance of those as we speak today. But if it is to operate as MBA, then it's going to breach what the Court of Appeal decided in 2017 in the case of uh, K. Hinde versus Nigerian Bar Association, where a similar issue played out. And the Court of Appeal held that once you are being called to the Nigerian Bar, you automatically become a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. So we have only one Nigerian Bar Association, which law students are called into. Now, I understand that there is nothing in the Legal Practitioners Act that, that provides for this, clearly to say that once you are called to bar, you become a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. It is not in the Legal Practitioners Act, right? And also in the Constitution, I understand there's a general freedom of assembly and association. But Section 45 of the Constitution qualifies this general right of freedom of association. So the qualifying factor in this instance will be the, the fact of the Nigerian Bar Association being already existing as the mother body to accommodate all lawyers. So it curtails that general right of freedom of assembly. It curtails it to that extent. And there's a, there's a, a binding precedent of the Court of Appeal on this subject that is yet to be controverted by the Supreme Court. And until that is done, that is the law as of today. Okay, I, I want to go back a little bit. I was speaking with Mr. Abubakar not long ago, and I was asking about the statement from the group that says that the actions of the NBA currently, and one of their reasons for setting up the new NBA, um, they describe the actions of the group as, and of course the incidents uh, to have exposed uh, the inability of the NBA to manage and contain the heterogeneity of its members, as well as their various interests. It also goes on to say its panel powers have been deployed um, discriminately, uh, on the basis of ethnicity and regionalism. Would you agree yes. with them? Do you think that they have a strong point there? With all due respect to them, they do not have any valid points on those, on those issues. All of this revolves around the circumstances uh, in which the governor of Kaduna State was disinvited to be a speaker at the NBA conference, right? The question we should ask, did the neck of the Nigerian Bar Association 
voluntarily act to disinvite Erufai? They did not. They acted on the basis of a petition written by members of the association who gave consistent and well detailed account of how this man has been notorious for right abuses. And on the back of that, the Nigerian Bar Association, in compliance with due process, put this matter to vote at the next meeting. And the vote favored that he should be disinvited. And the neck is bound by the majority votes of the, of the neck. So there is no ethnic or religious consideration into all of this. People are trying to give a dog a bad name just to hang it or to achieve whatever primitive or primordial interest. There is nothing about ethnicity or religion in the manner the neck acted in disinviting His Excellency the Governor of Kaduna State. Now, there is a sister argument that there are other members on that panel who had similar notorious rights abuses in their dockets, and they were not disinvited. That is a valid, a valid argument. But the question should be, as at the time the NEC sat to decide to put the issue to vote, which of the petitions were before it? It was only the petition against Erufai that was before the NEC. And the NEC took a decision on that point. Two days after, people are now saying, oh, you disinvited this man, you should disinvite this other, this other person. But the NEC could not have acted in vacuum. The issue of Nyeson Wike or the signal of Basanjo was not before the NEC. And the NEC couldn't have acted on that. So people should not mix things up just to um, uh, uh, um, push a narrative to justify uh, the right. very uh, uh, untoward actions that they are taking. All right. Hold, hold on. I want to go back to uh, Mohamed Abubakar. Um, and um, I'm talking, if you can hear me clearly, um, in 2008, if you remember, I'm sure you must know this, Professor Morris Iwo was also um, had his invitation withdrawn after criticism of his handling of the 2007 elections. But then it didn't generate ethnic or religious sentiments as what is going on today. Um, can you help us make uh, understand what makes this one different? Yeah, thank you very much. If I have only stated my point, and I will still emphasize on making my point very, very clear to the public, that uh, the agitation to forming the new MBA is not, and is not for the sake of this inviting the governor, the executive governor of Kaduna State. Please, I think to us it's a wrong notion. It's a wrong notion which ought to be corrected. It's not because of the disinvitation of the governor of the Kaduna State that gave back to this. As we earlier stated, we have uh, much issues, much grievances within the fold of the MBA. We have much grievances, not today, and not what just happened. You could recall before the election, after the election, before the conference, and even after the conference, we have issues. What we are after here, yeah, what we are saying is the NBA supposed to be a body to uphold the rule of law as encapsulated in our motto. That that is not being adopted today. That is not the case today. Can you, can you quickly give us reasons why you feel the NBA um, isn't acting right? In 2008 that you are talking about, very well, we are not politicians. I repeat, we are not politicians. We are supposed to be the people that promote justice, equity, fairness in this society. Therefore, if we begin to play into the hands of politics, I think there are things that will definitely go wrong. In this premise, that is the angle we are coming from, that the NBA, as we speak, is bedeviled with the politicals and politicians. And that we can no longer take. All right. What happened in the neck and whatsoever that gave birth to the disinvitation of Erufai is one among the big give uh, grievances that we are complaining about. I love my friend when he made his submission that the LPA 
which is a legal practitioner act, especially made mention of NBA. Please, it's not the body that created the NBA. NBA is the creation of um, the CAC, the Kama, Corporate Affairs Commission. And as such, it's an association, like other associations. And we all know the position of law when it comes to associations. All right. Kindly hold on. Um, Raymond and Kaneba, I'm bringing you back in. We're going to wrap up the conversation with you um, uh, this evening. I, I want to know about your thoughts on, um, from what, of course, uh, Mohamed Dababaka has just said, um, the NBA being politicized. And then second, um, how much of a task do you think the new president, Olumide uh, Akwata, has ahead of him, um, seeing that, of course, you know, just a few days before he was sworn in, you know, there's all this you know, crisis Okay, thank you very much. Um, I heard my friend say part of the reason why they want to break out from the modern NBA is the politicization yeah. of the NBA. Unfortunately, I waited for him to give me the particulars of that politicization to see the merit of it, and it wasn't forthcoming. Now, if the, if the issue is that we the NBA invites politicians to a conference for one reason or the other, the question would be, does that amount to politicization of the NBA? My answer would be no, because the NBA's motto is promoting the rule of law, and governors and politicians are involved in that process. So if you have a conference, uh, you invite one or two of them to be in the panel to give to, uh, to, to contextualize issues from the standpoint of the leadership. I don't think it's nothing bad in it is for us to have a balanced discourse on the issues that agitate us as a nation. That is not a case of politicizing the NBA. That is that for that. Secondly, on the issue of how the new ESCOs led by uh, Mr. Olumide Akpata would go on, I'm not, I'm not in any doubt that he has fulsome understanding of the issues. And if you read his inaugural address, he also he betrayed understanding of these issues. So the first task of the new ESCO today will be to, um, by far as much as possible, try to unite the bar. In any event, the mantra of his campaign was to make the bar work for all. And that suggests the bar cannot work for all if the bar is not working or pulling in one direction. So I imagine the new ESCOs will um, double down and try to um, talk to these uh, warring factions who might be misguided for whatever reason, I believe dialogue should be deployed to talk to them, understand their grievances, and try to explain issues to them, and try to get them to understand that it is only when the bar works together that the real goal of promoting the rule of law can actually be achieved. Yeah. We cannot be claiming to be the moral conscience of society, whereas we have not kept our house in order. So I, I implore the new ESCOs to open their administration on this note, so that um, the bar can pull in one direction. All right, and just before we go, if you can squeeze this answer in in less than a minute, I would truly appreciate it. Chief Michael Zekome-san, who spoke at the handover of the NBA leadership, also advised aggrieved members against forming an alternative association. He said that such a move would be resisted. Uh, can you quickly share with us what kind of resistance is possible? Um, less than a minute, please. Okay, I agree. Well, the resistance is simple. The NBA works in a structure, and the NBA, the way it is, up, the way it is run, it cuts across the sister organs in the, in the Nigerian basketball legal profession. We have the Legal Practitioners Act, the Legal Practitioners different Committee, different committees. So if they are saying they want to break away, they are not going to be availed other paraphernalia of practicing as legal practitioners in Nigeria. So automatically, they will find themselves out in the cold like a fish out of water right. until they realize their indiscretion and come back like the proverb like the prodigal son in the bible okay uh Mohammed abubakar can you quickly also respond to that um words from uh, chief michael zekome i love uh, this permission of my many friends as if we chose to break away we cannot enjoy Yes, most importantly, what we've been, uh, this is made clear, the point that we are still hammering on, still emphasizing on, is so long we agree, and you know, we know the law, that uh, NPA is an association, any other 
things that will come, many of the auxiliary that will uh, suggest that uh, the NFDA will not get some benefits whatsoever. I think uh, that will not hold what I would respect to us taking a stand. We've already carried out our uh, primary assignment that we've carried out our due diligence before we embark on this decision. And therefore, I don't think, I don't think, and I don't think that anything that uh, uh, my learned friend just submits uh, now that uh, will be maybe will be denied, will be, we are going to be denied. I don't think that that will come in, that will come to play. And it's, uh, it's, it's laughable to say, it's funny to, to, this is laughable for you to have, and I say All that. Right. Because if we agree and we are taking note of that, that NBA is an association, therefore any other association will stand irrespective of um, uh, what uh, may come after. All right. Um, Raymond Nkanebe and uh, Mohamed Abubakar, thank you both for sharing with us um, on the program this evening. Um, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. We'll be right back. My take this evening on the program is going to be coming mostly from the discussion we were meant to have with Professor Wally Shoinka, but I'll go ahead. On the 1st of August in 2018, the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, stated that access of Nigerians to pipe-borne water has dropped from 32% in 1990 to 7% in 2015, adding that about 71% of Nigerians have no access to quality water sanitation. He also said that only 69% of the people who have access to improved water uh, supply in Nigeria, 69%. Um, since 2018, it doesn't seem like much has improved with those figures. Water has, for the last few decades, become one of those items Nigerians provide for themselves. From those who can afford to drill a borehole in their homes, to the popular Meirua, who are popular in certain areas across the country, supplying water in as many as 12 gallons at a time. They are pretty popular in urban and rural areas, on the average 60 to 100 naira for a full gallon of water. That is the reality of millions of Nigerians. What else is left for the government to provide? Nigerians really have gotten used to providing everything for themselves, from electricity to education, healthcare, and now water. Most of what we call basic amenities are all self and citizen funded. To make all of this worse, the world currently is going through a pandemic that has caused untold hardship on countless number of people, including uh, Nigerian citizens. Countries outside, well, besides Nigeria, provided necessary palliatives, sometimes through cash transfers to their citizens to help ease the economic crisis caused by the pandemic. Some nations canceled loan payments or extended repayment dates. Some provided free or reduced charges on basic items. Some offered tax relief to businesses, funded virtual learning for public schools, and so much more. All in a bid to make the last few months easier for their citizens. The Nigerian government can't be said to have in many, many ways really made things easier for citizens. My biggest worry is how certain bills go through a national assembly that is meant to be fully speaking the voice of the people. How do they get through two readings, even with the outrage across the country? Who then is the national assembly speaking for? How does the national assembly get feedback on the views and emotions of the Nigerian people they represent? Nigerians need to feel a sense of security with those speaking on their behalf um, in the national assembly. And that's my take. Thank you for joining us tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Have a great evening. My name is Osaogi Ogbowan.